Hi YouTube. Um, this will be a video on the installation of the Kerbin Performance uh, rear seat brace kit. Okay, and here is the pectoral um, of the kit. And this fits the early A bodies. Says it, uh, says it right here. 78 to 80s were A bodies and evolving into the G bodies. And this drawing is uh, is anyway. This is what you're going to get, and where you uh, where you meet things up with uh, with this brace kit. So I read about it and decided to purchase one of these kits. And this is what it looks like. And as I go through the various steps, I cross out that step. If someone wants to read this again, you'll have to freeze it through the different steps amid uh, uh, their installation. So I'll freeze and read if you want to look at the various steps. All right, and in this example, um, the instructions preface the removal of the factory carpet. And I would call that not carpet, I call it juke padding. And I've done that here, along with the rear package shelf. And uh, more juke padding. And the trunk liner on this, in this example, 87. Uh, Buick Grand National. Now, if your car has been compromised, so to speak, they make mention, and in the instructions it makes mention of paying particular attention to the welds on the factory installed cross members. Now we'll call them A, B in the middle, and C on the driver's side. I've inspected those welds. They're, uh, they're a stamp weld. And all these areas where these braces, you know, do their job. And again, this will make it a better job, more rigid, that sort of thing. And uh, be a nice insurance marker. But, you know, again, back to my concern, this, uh, this example car has a T-top. And while I assume the, the uh, roof structure is a bit different, um, these cars are more vulnerable to... Um, B pillar cracks and fatigue amid the movement prefaced earlier in the video uh, those sorts of things you know line in those remarks and that was kind of the tipping block for me to to, to get the kit anyway here are the four uh, braces that are the topic of the whole task here so to speak and I guess it's pretty much one and done it also tells you to get the weight of the vehicle off uh, and the wheels hanging. So if the car shifts, I assume the reason is, is that the, if the car shifts, and it does, it moves when it's hoisted, that um, the task be done that way and lock it down while that it's in that position and uh, to do the work that way. And then when you lay the car down, it's supposedly much more rigid and I believe that to be the case. Here's the hardware kit and the insulators that uh, where the braces intersect so they won't squeak and make noise and get a half inch drive or a 13 millimeter uh, socket and a pistol ready and go through that uh, go through that process so let's do that but anyway here's here's the kit here's the basic kit you get the four braces one two three and four uh, seven bolts seven nuts seven washers. I put a welding blanket down. I can lie on that and anyway as I preface to have all your hardware, your pistols, your drill uh, ready and let's let's see what we can do here with an installation. Okay and I'm lucky enough to have a little floor hoist here. Let's get the weight off the vehicle.
You then go to step four. Working from the trunk, locate the center reinforcement brace and drill a quarter inch hole one half inch below the center tack welded factory braces top edge, period. Let's look at that. All right, now this location is going to be hard to video. And it should be noted that that's pretty much a bullseye under the third lamp brake up on the package shelf and where that harness ascends through that grommet. I should have brought a light with me. I didn't, even though it's sunny daylight, but this is in a, an area of, the, of shade, like up where a bat would roost or something, and you can't see anything on that, on that center brace. There he is. But I'm going to do that, uh, do that hole, and I'll show you where it is. Okay, and here's where that hole is. Okay, so the bolt's through, the washer's on. We can see where those braces in this rather tight quartered area go. And the next step will be, and I'll lay the camera here, to lock the brace in at its low, the lowest point that you can accomplish. But I think what's important here is that we're taking the hardware through both plates, one here and one here, and another one up here. at the vertex in the center because uh, there's a plate up here again it's going to be hard to see one here and one below and then the same down on the other side and uh, it just says get the brace down once it's short up here to its lowest point drill a hole and then we'll come back and we'll lock another bolt into here if you can see that hole below that trunk spring right there. Um, only one side, but I guess there's a little bit of a kick on this. Would be the, taking off to the left side where there isn't that plate on the right. So the more rigid the better. So let's do that. You can see the number two in the bolt. And now we're going to go over here to the number one. And find the best place. Again, you'll see the double frames here. One atop another where they're welded together. Stamp welded, whatever the welded term is. And get this in a place where it's most accessible. And do it. Okay, back it off here. So the number one and number two braces are now done. You can see we kicked this hole in off on the number two brace in this example. You can't really get these wrong. In other words, one has to go to the passenger side and two has to go to the driver's side. And you honker them down at those three points. Oh, four if you want to include this this guy here and it's down on the other side So one and two are now done. Let's go on to three and four Okay, and in step nine brace three and four You can see that brace up in here, and we're starting to crisscross but in this location the left rear speaker has a obviously a plug on it there he is and there's a clip here in that conduit for that speaker so you'll take that clip out and that gets us the hole that we need in other words a pre-existing hole there he is right dead shot middle for this brace and to relocate that hole, well, I don't think I'm going to bother with that. I think the hanger holds the wire enough. 
and that's where the location of this side will be. Now this will be the same in this example on both sides at both speakers. So let's do that for brace 3 and 4, step 9. Conduit holder that I just told you about, this little guy here that, you, that you're going to take out. And that's important because that's the money shot, that's the hole that you need. You don't need to drill this, you don't need to guess. Um, anyway, you just put the wire right over top of the bolt there, and it's, it's going to stay up there. There's no room for it to go anywhere. And where these meet at this vertex in the center gusset is going to determine where we're going to bolt that. So anyway, there's one side, and uh, let's do the other. At that speaker. All right, there it is. There's the dry, the uh, passenger side. I'm sorry. So that's brace number four. Yeah, yeah. And now we got to find where these are gonna butt up here in the center. So let's align that in the best possible position. I'm gonna probably swap three and four around to be sure that I'm as absolutely correct as I can be. Um, I don't think on the diagram as I look at it, it doesn't specifically say uh, it says where the holes are, hole E, hole C, hole A, you know, but which brace is up and down and which corner and where's the center and so on, so um, I'm going to look into that right now. Let's do that. Okay, and now the driver's side brace, we'll call it, is installed. And what I'm going to do uh, to find the best center is I'm going to just going to be in the middle of each side on these. Does that make sense in that slot? I don't know why, but I did just sense that this isn't a good thing to nut it up this way or that way. Um, let it flow it, I guess, is where I'm going. So I'll have this in the center, say right there, and the same for the other side. And then we'll meet up in that same example here where that little silver hole is in my tight confine back here. This is the best I can do. Let's get that done. Okay, and as I nut these down, again, I'm trying to hold this. I'm at the center upstairs here, so to speak, and downstairs. The bolt's already in up there. So here I can find that center. And, you know, I'm having a thought here that, you know, this... I spoke earlier of my vice grip on how I had to tweak that just a little bit. Um, I think if you can here, the idea is that, you know, leave that alone and they're going to find their own home, so to speak. So in other words, this bracket doesn't really want to bolt up here um, if you were to tighten the top here or this corner up here. Leave it alone. What is that in focus? Leave it alone, and just as it says, uh, put everything in loose, get all the harbor in, and then, hunk, you know, find the center I just showed you, and then hunker it down. So, in other words, if that were tight, then this brace wouldn't want to go on here too well. So I can't do this and film at the same time, but see the give here, back and forth. So I'll bolt this one up, knot it up, I should say, bolt whatever, and... and See, uh, see what we uh, what we get, but the way that they intersect here is perfect, and I should suppose the last step would be before you do that to put these grommets in right here on this uh, on this brace. I didn't read this yet. I assume that's where we're going. You know, both sides. Uh, before you bolt it down, because if you have to fatigue these to get that in there, that's not going to help us much. I don't want to move it, in other words, when I when I nut it up, uh, bolt it up well, or done, or in that, you know, step of finality there. 
and I'm over on this side again we can see that uh, this is a hole that we have to drill and this side has a kick off this plate and we make use of that with another hole over here so bold A, bold B we'll call it and down below at that, uh, at that center so let's do it up here and be done and look at it in a sense of finality. They don't tell you in the kit to, to bolt these up at the center here and I guess the, the idea is for them to move freely but um, you know it's a little bit of a the hardest part for me was to get my south back in there in the in the trunk up in there I'm a big guy and um, you know, just like the instructions say, the the, the uh, back juke padding comes out, and with that, the package shelf will slip out on the top where the speakers are in the saw factory example. I've got another kind of a plan. I'm going to, you know, while I'm in here, a little bit of housekeeping I'm going to do. I'll go into that. And, um, you know, mostly with regard to aesthetics, but... Um, you know, all in all, it's a it's a pretty easy job. It's a nice kit. The installation's spot on. It's, um, you know, I mean, you can see it for what it is. And, uh, you know, a pretty good review. Uh, probably a strong five-star review. I mean, if that matters here. And, uh, well laid out and you know I thought I'd get a, a conduit pipe and you know truth be told I did and make these myself and I you know there's the back juke padding and the carpet and everything so I bought this this uh, stainless steel conduit pipe a, a long one and thought well I can make those but I don't think you can do that honestly uh, amid all the different geometry uh, involved in in the doing, so to speak, uh, to get all that right. In fact, I know I couldn't. So this is an example for, what, 80 bucks or something like that, where uh, you get what you pay for. Seems like a good upgrade. Alrighty, and this is an, an, an optional thing that uh, I've done before. I'll do this with hood blankets and, uh, you know, that are expensive. Anyway, you look at them and aesthetically they don't look too great or they're pulled through where the clips are and this landscaping mesh uh, it's nice and wide works well so for the in sound barrier insulation barrier or whatever behind the back seat that you, when you open up the trunk you see you can see that I put this all around the perimeter and uh, just takes a moment, snip it with the scissors, and then anyway I fold it and then staple it with a old school stapler. And you can see all the slots and stuff are, are cut and a couple staples. And when you turn it over and I'll show you what I'm where I'm going with it. So voila, a new uh I like new uh barrier. And it looks like fine cheesecloth in from the trunk. So where before I had to look at that, uh, oh, that lighter type of a juke padding, I can look at this. And then the, the ribbed bars will be in front of it from the trunk side. But um, I just cut slots here in, in the three areas. And it just hangs on three little hooks on the, uh, on the seat wall. Go back into the car again. See those hangers? There's one there in the center. And that'll hang right in there. Anyway, then with that uh, being done, then put in the rest of the uh, sound deadening material. And then slip the, uh, slip the package shelf back back in. I'm going to probably back that off and clean the window. So there's an easy upgrade. Let's see how it looks. Okay, and then a few moments later, you can see those, uh, those hooks here I was talking about where this hangs, in case anybody missed that. 
Anyway, then here would be the uh, our view. And that looks a little better to me. So, um, I mean, you can go to a carpeting place and get carpet and whatever. And hell, I just use landscaping stuff. You don't need the 3M80, you know, to mat it down. It's not going to go anywhere. And, you know, I'll take those... I'll take those uh, stickers off, those part number stickers on those um, supports that we just put in and it'll be alright. Alright, then here would be the back uh, package shelf next. Slip the bracket in for the, uh, whoops, for the third level light there. And tuck it in. Very easy. Let's put the seats in now. And this would be a good time, if you think about it, to slip an LED bulb in there so it doesn't get so hot. Those are known to really bake those cases with those 1156 lamps. So, think on that. Now would be a good time to scotch guard the, the back seat. Done that. Then slip the seat back in. And the belts. And, of course, the seat belt. Torx bolts. This would be a good time to remember that there's a pocket on the seat back, a plastic pocket, in two spots where the belts go through, as not to lose the belts. Keep them up high. And let's put the seat base in. And do the seat back. Scotch card that too. If you want. All right, and then the seat base is in. Pop the belts up above. Obviously, it's a no-brainer. Have the third light in. And while you're apart, now would be maybe a good time to upgrade these to LEDs as well. They're about a buck a bob. They just sip current. They don't get hot. Anyway, it's a win-win. So that's done. Let's Go to the trunk lastly, and that'll be the end of that. Mm. I don't know. I, I think that I'll get used to the to the view of the trunk. The trunk is a trunk. But they, they look at home. I pop those stickers off of the uh, strut bars. Looks like a nature of things. I'm not particularly upset. Maybe I'll black the bolts out. That, uh, that's okay. So that, uh, as they say, would be that. And you're uh, 81 to 87, I guess in 78 to 80, A body and G body cars for the uh, rear trunk braces, as I said. Okay, don't forget, to, don't forget to rate and comment. Thank you. And if you want to subscribe, appreciate that. Take care.